This video is about the public land survey, the system used to find a point or an area on the surface of the earth. Uh, it is kind of similar to latitude and longitude, but also quite different because it doesn't really find, re define a point so much as a, an area. And this is the system that is used on uh, property taxes. So if you've ever seen those uh, descriptions of your your parents' land, which might be the northwest corner of the southwest west corner of the 16th section of blah, blah, blah. That is the public land survey method, right? So in addition to latitude and longitude, another method used for designing loca designating location on Earth is the public land survey. It is the system used through much of the central and western United States to identify land such as might be described on a property deed or a tax statement, as I was mentioning. The public land survey, uh, which systematically divides the land into regular areas, much like large piece of graph paper, begins with an initial point. And generally, there are one or more initial points for each state. An east-west line called a baseline is drawn in a north-south line called a principal meridian, extend through the initial point, and provide the basis for the grid. Horizontal lines at six-mile intervals that parallel the baseline establish, establish east-west tracks called townships. So there are the north townships, uh, T1 north, T2 t north, and T3 north. You can probably guess that there are also township designations south of the baseline, T1 south, T2 south, T3 south. And then we draw vertical lines uh, that are sort of like the township lines, uh, six mile intervals uh, parallel to the principal meridian, and those are called ranges. So these are the range one east, range two east, range three east, range four east. And we also have range 1 west, range 2 west, R3 west, R4 west. So very similar to latitude and longitude, this is a like a game of battleship for designating a location. On a topographic map, the public land survey coordinates are in red. So you'll see T number S or T number N, that's township, the township number, and then the direction either north or south of the baseline. The ranges will be across the top and the bottom of the map, and you'll see R for range, the number, and then either east or west, depending on if you're east or west of the uh, baseline, or not the baseline, the, uh, the meridian. All right, we're going to skip the questions. Okay, so when you have a specific township and a specific range, then that six mile by six mile block is called a congression, congressional township. And around uh, here, where we live in Wisconsin, these are uh, governmental entities. And I live in Gilman Township, there's Spring Lake Township, and other townships are a six mile by six mile block. And it is designated by its township and range numbers. We're going to skip the questions. Although you could go back and pause the video and work that out on your own. Um, each congressional township is then subdivided into 36 one square mile parcels of land called sections. So. This was six miles by six miles, and now each mile we're going to draw another line. And so you got six times six, you got 36 square miles inside of one congressional township. Each one mile by one mile block is 640 acres. And this is also why in the country, right, most of the roads, the blocks are about a mile long. It's because they're drawn on these uh, subdivision lines in uh, side of a township. Sections are numbered in kind of a weird way. They start in the northeast corner and they go 
to the left, then down one to the right, then down one to the left, then down one. So one through 36 is the way that the, the uh, sections get numbered. And then you can look at that and pick out one, and this would be section 18, uh, T1S, R2W. But that's still a pretty big area. That's a one mile by one mile area. Um, on a topographic map, there are red lines which indicate the edges of a section of a township. Um, often they coincide with roads. On this map they don't happen to, but around here they often do. Uh, and the number of the section is always printed in the center of those red lines on a uh, USGS topographic map. Now that's still a pretty big area, one, one mile by one mile. So we sometimes divide that, or we often divide that, into other sections. Like uh, sections can be divided into halves, a western half, a northern half, a southern half. Or they can be divided into quarters. Uh, this is currently showing us the southeast quarter of section 18. And then you can take quarters and divide those further into quarters. So that's a quarter of a quarter. Right now, this lighted one is the southeast corner of the northeast corner of section 18. Right? So southeast corner of the northeast corner of section 18. which is, this is another example of what I was just talking about. This is the northwest corner of the northeast corner of section 18. When writing the description of land using the public land survey, the smallest subdivision is given first, and then the township number precedes the range number. For example, this little flashing thing right there is part of the southeast quarter of the northeast quarter of section 11 of T1S R2W. That's the type of description that you might see on a property deed or a tax statement. And that's what, now you know what that means. The universal transverse mercator is an entirely different and third type of system for finding location on the surface of the earth. So we talked about latitude and longitude. That's the most common one that we'll be using a lot in class. Uh, I just discussed the public land survey, which is used a lot for property deeds and taxes. We're not going to worry about it very much in class. There's a third system that we're not going to talk at all about in class, but I will just briefly explain what it is so that you can see that and not be confused by it. It's sort of an, a metric um, way of measuring on the surface of the Earth. Uh, latitude and longitude, the public land survey, are used regularly. The third method is complicated, it's metric, and it's used a lot by scientists. And so because a lot of scientists use topographic maps, the USGS includes the UTM coordinates on topographic maps as well. So the UTM system is, uh, takes all the earth between 80 south and 80 north and puts a grid on top of it. Uh, the grid is divided into 60 sections, right? Six degrees of longitude are in each section. Uh, the UTM grid zone is assigned a number beginning at 180 meridian. Uh, the grid zone is one and then they're consecutively numbered eastward, so they go all, all the way around the globe. The location north or south is given by um, a letter, so kind of the equivalent of latitude, and it's eight degrees of latitude. It's a letter, so this is a lot like a battleship game. And the reason it's confusing is because um, it, it uses a flat parallel grid system. 
um, you maybe notice that longitude lines actually get closer to each other as they get to the pole and they touch when they're right on the pole. Um, and most maps are, are zoomed in enough that they you can't see that, although that's actually happening. Um, the UTM coordinates don't bend in, right? They don't curve like those lines of longitude do, right? So you can see um, here's a a latitude line, a latitude line. The longitude lines down here are further apart than they are at the top. The UTM coordinate system is going to be perfect right angles. They're going to be perfect, perfect square, perfect grid. And so that's uh, kind of nice for making calculations when you're using scientific map or topographic maps in scientific study. But if you're not doing that, then it's a little bit of a cumbersome system. All right, so each grid is a uh, hundred thousand square meters and they overlap with latitude and longitude in this way. And we're just going to kind of skip through stuff. Um, we will talk about the difference between um, true north and magnetic north and this gives us an indication of UTM grid coordinates. Uh, we're not going to use that, so when you see this M Mills thing, you could just skip over it. Um, so they they do measure northing and southing and easting and westing, just like many other things have. Um, and so we've got a UTM coordinate here telling you how far north, how far east of whatever we've chosen as our baseline. The important thing for Earth Science 8 is not that I want you to learn how to use the UTM coordinate system, but that I want you to recognize recognize it when you see it and not to use it. So when you see things that say little 42, big 33, 0000, zero, zero, zero and a big N, and there's no degrees, and there's no minutes, and there's no seconds, and there's no township or range, those are UTM coordinates. So if I ask you to find the latitude and longitude of something, make sure that you're using things that have degrees, minutes, and seconds marked out. Don't use UTM coordinates because those are not latitude and longitude. They are something different. Just like latitude and longitude in the corners, you get kind of a full reckoning of degrees, minutes, seconds with latitude and longitude. With UTM coordinates, you get a pretty good, um, the full number in the corner and then as you move along the edges of the page, you'll just see these smaller things. They have blue tick marks, so don't use the blue tick marks, and you'll see a tiny number and a bigger number. And those are telling you northings or southings or eastings or westings in UTM coordinates, and we will not be using those. We are going to stick to latitude and longitude. I only point these out so that you can see those blue tick marks in these lines, uh, these numbers, are not what we'll be using. They are not latitude and longitude. 